let's try this again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Come on, Facebook. Crossing my fingers. I'm crossing my fingers. Oh, there we go. It looks like it's working now. I just, I don't know. I don't know. There's Stacia. Hi, Stacia. I'm glad you're here. I don't know what is wrong with Facebook. The first try, it always kicks me out. I don't understand why, but at least we're here now. So, hi, hi. Hi, Joan. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Whew. So, here I am. <laughs> Michelle says, there you are. Here I am. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Kendall. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's Friday. It's Feel Good Friday. It's the best day of the week, as far as work days are concerned, right? I mean, Feel Good Friday is the best work day. Because, I mean, you just can't compete with a Saturday, <laughs> right? You can't compete with sleeping in and, you know, being lazy and living in your pajamas and drinking your coffee real slow. That's what Saturdays are for. Feel Good Fridays. Feel Good Fridays are a little bit more upbeat, but completely casual. So for those of you who are new to Feel Good Fridays, first and foremost, welcome in. Second of all, welcome to Feel Good Friday. <laughs> Feel Good Fridays are simple, easy, beautiful jewelry that you can recreate using stuff from your own stash or... You can pick up the kits for all of the jewelry that you see in Feel Good Friday uh, Facebook Lives over in my Etsy shop. Guys, the, the kits have already dropped. I've already sold a few of them. <laughs> you guys are really fast. So just so you know, the kits are already there and people are already grabbing them up. So just, <laughs> Suzanne says, this week has felt like a month. Whew, let me tell you. So... Yesterday was a very long day. Did you guys hang out with me all day yesterday? I know some of you were with me all day yesterday. So we had our regular live at 1 p.m. Eastern time, just like we always do. And then for the hardwired group, we met at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time with our special guest. We had Meredith, we had a great show. It was so much fun. Meredith was our first like official special guest. It was a great show. She showed a little bit of chain mail. We got to chat a little bit. She talked about wire. It was a lot of fun. And then as soon as that was over, I popped over to Sam's bead shop and I actually thought it was late to Sam's bead shop show. I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to be there until the intermission, which is hysterical. So I totally interrupted the entire show and he brought me on. So I got to ooh and ah with a, in a front row seat to see all of the beads for the first half of the show. And then Sam and I did a little chat in the middle. And you guys, like by the time I finally got to bed last night, I was completely satisfied because I felt like I had had such a good day and had accomplished so much, but I was so tired. I was like, oh, sitting in this chair, it's a comfortable chair, but after you sit here for hours and hours, I was like so happy to finally lay down. But yesterday was such a good day. It was a busy day though. It's, it's hard to do three lives in one day. <laughs> it really takes a lot out of you. It's really weird how that happens, but. So Joan has my sign up for text updates uh, pinned here. So if you have not signed up for my text updates, please do so. It's free. It's it's how I send um, out my little snippets of information, mostly just reminders of the show coming up. And um, anything important, of course, will come across that way because I, I do have an email list, but I never use it for anything. I was so enthusiastic about having like a mailing list that you could subscribe to but then when it came down to the nitty-gritty it was like this is so much trouble <laughs> whereas the text I can just kind of text it in there and send it off and it's on its way and I don't have to make it look pretty I don't have to doctor it up and add images and I mean I maybe one day but right now I just I don't have the patience for that it's terrible right I'm a terrible business person because of that I'm sure but oh hi Katie so the text messages are already down here pinned. If you, you just text whatever you want to, just say your name if you want to, to the number that's pinned and you'll automatically be signed up. The first message that you get is an automated message, but then every message after that is actually me, just so you know. Um, let's see. I was going to scroll back because I could have sworn I saw something that was a question. Um, 
and it was back a bit. So give me just a second. I'm just scrolling back on the comments here. Hello to all of you. I'm so happy that you are here. Um, let's see. Marsha says I work from home, so I wear jammies every day. Me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> sweatpants. I live in sweatpants. Real clothes? What are those? I put on real jeans to go out into the world, and I'm like, ooh, why do people wear these? Because <laughs> I've been in sweats for so long. I know there was a question here. I know there was. Okay, I can't, it won't let me scroll back any further. It, it was a nodding question. Whoever left the nodding question right at the beginning of the show, will you post it again? Because I, I didn't see it, and I'm sorry. I know that it was there, and I don't want to leave you, like, hanging or think that I was ignoring you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's see. Feel Good Friday, kits in the shop. I do have things to update you on before we get started. Um, so just a reminder of what's coming up for next week. So next week, the schedule is going to be a little bit different for our regular lives. So Tuesday will be our same time, same place. Thursday, there will not be a 1 p.m. live on Thursday. So my youngest is graduating fifth grade, and Thursday and Friday are big days for her. So um, I won't be around for the Thursday 1 o'clock, and the Friday 1 o'clock will actually be probably 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'm still going to have that show. It's just going to get moved. So I'll keep you posted on that. I... Friday is her fifth grade graduation, like the actual walk. So it happens to be at 1 p.m., which is the same time that our live is. So I need to move that, but I want to I wanna still have a show. Um, as far as the hardwired lives are concerned, they'll all still be just like normal. They won't be, um, they won't be moved. Um, let's see. Question was, they asked what size cord to use with larger holes. So any kind of larger hole beads where you want to do any hand knotting, you're going to need to step up a size. So for the pearls that we did yesterday, we used a size six silk cord. If you've got a bead that has a larger hole, you're going to need to use like a number eight or even a number, um, nine or 10. Okay. And unfortunately there's no like real, measurement system there a lot of times it's just trial and error which can be kind of frustrating the good news is is that the silk on the cards is not super expensive and if you can't use it for one project you can use it for another project so um you're going to need to go up bigger than a size six size six is what you're going to find the most in your box stores um but beetle on on their website offers it in a wide range of sizes so there should be a size for for every project that's available um, okay, let's see. What else? Um, I feel like I feel like I've got everything covered. If I can think of anything else, though, I will definitely let you guys know. So you guys know, those of you who are used to Feel Good Fridays, Feel Good Friday is always super casual. So the chatter in the um, the stream here is very casual and goofy. We we usually have a lot of fun on Fridays, and the projects themselves are very easy. And, um, also, um, we're really relaxed. So if casual chattiness is not your jam, <laughs> you might want to watch this on YouTube and fast forward. It's <laughs> kind of the point I'm trying to make. So, uh, yeah. All right. Oh, <sighs> so. The first project I have, so I have three things, okay? I have three projects for you guys, and all three of these are in kit form over in the shop, okay? So the one I'm going to start with is a bracelet project. I'm not going to show you the bracelet project start to finish. I have it, I'm going to step out because it it's a long project. It's an easy project, but it's a long project with cup chain. The second project I'm going to show you is a request, actually, that I just happened to have enough of to create kits out of, which I thought was super cool. So somebody had asked me about beetle on wrappers, and I'll show you what those are if you've never seen them before, and I'll show you how to use them. And then I have three different shapes that are available for earrings in the shop. And then last but not least is a necklace that is to die for which is a terrible thing to say when you think about it. Don't die for this necklace, <laughs> but it's gorgeous. I am I love this necklace so much and it includes a crown. So all of you who are um, part of the Straighten Your Crown group, this one's for you. Um, anybody else can get it as well, of course, but um, God, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. I cannot wait to show it to you. I'm so excited. So whew, 
Enough of the housekeeping. Let's get down to it. I'm going to show you guys the first of three projects, shall we? All right. So, the very first project that we have, you're going to need to use your tying station with. If you don't have a tying station, then you're going to want to safety pin this to something or use a clipboard. So, you don't have to have the tying station for it, but just know that that's the kind of project that this is. So let me show it to you and then I'll show you how to get it started and I'll show you how to finish it. But the in-between part, we're gonna kind of skip over, okay? So these are cup chain bracelets on leather cord and they are available in the shop in three different colors. So the colors for these, one of them is this beautiful black leather cord with red cup chain. One of them is black leather cord with the, the crystal clear cup chain, this one. And then there is one that is brown leather with blue cup chain, okay? And you get the leather, you get the cup chain, you get the belon to do the knotting, which I'm gonna show you, and your button. So you get all the parts, okay? So this is just one of them. They're easy to put together. I'm going to show you real quick how to get started and then I'm going to show you how to finish it so that you can complete the entire project. But I'm not going to do all of the knotting with you guys because then that would probably take up the entire show. But these are so pretty. So these are available over in the shop. Let me show you how to get started with these. Okay. So you're going to get your piece of leather, your button, and you've got six feet that's not an exaggeration. Six feet of belon. And for the black leather, you get black belon. For the brown um, leather, you get brown. Okay. So you're going to take your leather. This piece is really, really short because I'm just showing you like an abbreviated version of this. Okay. So don't freak out. You've got plenty in your kit. <laughs> but you're going to take your leather piece and you're going to fold it in half. And then you're going to tie an overhanded knot. And your overhanded knot, you want to create a loop out of it that is going to accommodate your button. So double check to make sure that your button is going to fit through the loop there. Okay, so pull that down nice and tight. Okay, and again, this is super, super short because it's just a practice piece. So now we're going to attach this to the tying station if you've got a tying station. If you don't, then definitely make sure that you attach it to something. Use a safety pin, attach it to, you know, a pillow if you're going to do this on the couch or whatever, or, you know, somebody who's sitting next to you, attach it to them. <laughs> a clipboard will work. You can even tape it down to the table, okay? So there's a lot of things you can do if you don't have a tying station. Don't feel like you, you can't do this. Okay, so... The double leather is going to be the base for our cup chain to actually sit on top of. So let me shorten up the bottom here of our tying station since we're not actually doing a full-blown piece. I've got to shorten up my end and attach that down. Okay, so now what we would do, let me lower you down so we can brighten this up a little bit too with our light. You just want to sit your button to the side because we don't need it at the moment, but you want to take your piece of belon and you've got six feet of this. So you want to bring the two ends together and find the center. Okay, so bring the two ends together, pull it down, find the middle. Okay, take the middle and place it underneath both pieces of your leather here. And what you're going to do is you're just going to create a square knot. And that's all this is. And we've done a ton of square knots together. So if you need any refreshers on that, you definitely can find those on the YouTube channel. There is a ton of projects where we've done square knots. I'm going to try to walk you through this, though. The first knot is always the trickiest. And that is, you know, that's that's usually the name of the game. Lisa says, can you use hemp? Yes, you can. You absolutely can use whatever you want. Okay. All right, so you've got your cord underneath your two pieces of leather, and you're going to take your right-handed cord, and you're going to create a P shape, and you're going to take that cord over the top of these two pieces of leather, okay? Then you want to take your left-hand cord, you want to go underneath 
those two pieces of leather and up through the p-shape that you created on the right-handed side and you're going to pull that's the first step of the square knot and you want to pull that nice and tight okay now we're going to do the left-handed side because the square knot happens in two steps okay always in two steps otherwise you end up with a spiral you want a flat knot so we're going to do the left-handed side p-shape it's coming across the center two chords here and then we're going to take our right-handed piece make sure that it goes over the top of this piece that you just moved over here and then back behind the two chords in the center and up through that p-shape that you made on the left-handed side and you're going to pull now you just want one of those to get you attached now we are attached to our leather and our ugly first knot is over with okay but now what we want to do is we want to attach our cup chain to this and in order to do that we're going to create square knots in between each one of our little cups so that little spacing in there is big enough to hold a full square knot when you're using something as thin as our um b-lawn here okay so what i like to do is i like to get the first knot started so my right hand or not the first knot, the first step of the knot rather, okay? So I've got the right-handed cord coming across the two middle cords, left-handed cord over it, back behind, and up through. But now before I pull this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cinch it up just a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it open so that I can take my cup chain and I wanna hook that very first cup. So I wanna hook between the first and second crystal on my cup chain and it's a little tricky at first but once you get this first one attached then you're good to go okay so I'm just going to kind of hold that in place and cinch up my knot <laughs> maybe all right stay in place there bud all right I'm going to pull down just this first one that's tricky after this you're good to go there we go okay so I got the first half of the knot now I'm gonna do the second half of the knot in that same space okay and I don't necessarily do it up here in the space I kind of open it up just to make it a little bit easier and then as I cinch it down I move it to where it needs to be so there was the left-handed P shape for our square knot okay and then I'm just going to move it up here into that space where that first knot is and cinch it all down. Now, that is nice and tight. And as you go, you're just going to keep going, okay? You're just going to keep repeating your square knots in between the spaces of each one of your little cups. And that is going to attach the cup chain to the surface of your leather. So the question was the leather cord what size is it it is 1.5 millimeter okay so here's my right hand p shape okay i'm going to take my whoops i'm going to take my left cord make sure it's coming over and i'm kind of holding the cups in the way so i'm or i'm holding the cups with my thumb so my fingers are in the way but it's still the same thing behind and up through that p shape that we made on the right Place it where you want it in between the second and third cup on the cup chain. And then you want to do the left side. So your left-handed P shape, the right one goes across and back behind. And as you start to pull that down, go ahead and place it next to the last knot that you made and pull tight. Okay. As you go, that's going to attach your cup chain to the surface of your leather cord. And you really want to be sure that you're using the double leather cord or a really thick, thick piece of leather. So the ones in the shop, obviously, you're going to want to double that cord over. If you just want to do a single strand of leather, that's fine. But you need to be sure that the single leather is going to be have enough surface area to accommodate the width of your cup chain. Okay. So that's why I doubled the cord. And you can see how that looks all along the back, which is just going to be up against your skin, so you're never going to see it. However, one of the cool things about this is after you have attached your cup chain and you've got this beautiful cup chain all the way down your bracelet, 
You also, you see the little openings on either side? That's where we've created the knot and then gone up to the next cup. You can actually add um, jump rings in between these little spaces and add dangles to your bracelet if you wanted to. So you could turn this into a full on, um, goodness, charm bracelet if you wanted to. Add whatever kind of dangles you wanted. You could use every space or every other space. So you can take this even further than what is available in the kit. So in the kit, you've got enough to do this, but you could take it to the next level with your own stuff, okay? So it comes in the red, the clear, and the blue. I'm gonna show you how to finish it. So you understand, you do your square knot, you do both steps of the square knot in between each cup, and then you just move up a cup, okay? So let me set this to the side and get you the one that's ready to finish. So this one is with the clear. I came all the way down here and I I cut off my cup chain where I was finished and finished with a single square knot just right up against this one, okay? So now what I wanna do to finish this off is I'm gonna do one more square knot and then I'm gonna take this off and I'll show you how to attach your button, okay? Ooh yeah, a choker would be gorgeous. So, my cord is a little short here, but <clears throat> we've got enough to work with. So right-handed side, making that little P-shape, left-handed side goes over that, underneath, whoops, and up through, and pull. Okay, and then we're gonna do the left side, left side little backwards P-shape and then take our right cord up through and pull. So I basically just finished this off with two additional square knots without any of the cup chain in between there, okay? So now what I wanna do is I want to take this off of the, um, the tying station or clipboard or whatever it is that you're using, okay? So you just wanna take it off. I haven't cut anything yet, haven't finished off my ends. I'm gonna do that right now. What size cup chain am I using? I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to let, I'll have to look. Um, let's see, where did my little gauge go? So the cup chain that we are using is a three by three. So it's a three millimeter cup chain. Okay, so once you take it off of the tying station or wherever you have it attached, turn it over to the back, okay? Take your two ends of your B-Lawn and you want to tie an overhanded knot and you want to bring that down to the surface, the back surface of the leather and pull it nice and tight. And then you want to do a second one. And actually, I didn't get that pulled tight enough, so I'm going to grab my pliers. Oh, I'm also going to make a mess here while I'm at it. I'm going to pull real tight. And then... Yes, you can use the tying station for so many things. I love my tying station. I use it for all kinds of projects because you can attach, you've got your hands free, and you can measure all at the same time, which is super fun. I'll do a tying station project next week because somebody asked yesterday if I would. So we'll do another tying station project. Okay, so pull that down super, super tight. Now what you wanna do is you want to come in with your hypo cement and you just want to put a little drop on that knot and you can go ahead and trim this nice and short if you want to but i like to let my cord or i like to let my glue set just a little bit before i cut it but then i will trim this all the way down i will shorten it though while we are whoops sorry while we are sitting here so oops Trim that off just for now. I will trim it super, super short. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you've got your leftover cord, your leather cord. We're gonna take it and we're gonna take it around our two fingers to create an overhanded knot. And we're gonna pull that down right up next to the last square knots that we made. It may even cover those square knots, okay? Cinch that down nice and tight. And now we wanna take our button, which is a shank style button. So it's got this little loop on the back. We're gonna 
thread that onto one piece of our leather because both pieces won't fit. Slide that down right up against our knot. And then we're gonna do another overhanded knot. And we wanna cinch that knot down right up against the shank of our button. Pull tight. Okay. I'm ready to come in here and trim off my little beelon ends. And then I'm also going to trim off the excess leather. I like to leave a little behind just because I like the way it looks. But then you're done. So you're gonna do, this is a tiny one because this was just a, just a practice for, you know, seeing how to finish it. It's a tiny little bracelet, probably will fit me, but it is a tiny little bracelet. You've got a much more materials to create the size bracelet that you're gonna need, okay? I made sure to include plenty of everything um, to accommodate a lot of different sizes, but that's how you're gonna finish that. So you're gonna do your square knots to attach your cup chain to your two pieces of your leather cord, and then you're going to finish it off tie an overhanded knot on the back, add some glue, and then finish off by adding your button to it, okay? So it's a pretty easy project, but the results are gorgeous. Like, you can't go wrong with sparkle and leather. I'm sorry, but you just can't. <laughs> it's just, it's just pretty no matter what you do. I wonder if this will fit me. I bet it will. Yep, it will. Because <laughs> I have, I have teeny beeny little twig wrists. I can get the button through there. All right, so that's the first kit that's available in the shop. It is, see how pretty that is? So pretty. A little tight, but it's okay. So red, clear, and the blue, and the blue is just amazing. Um, is there a reason why to put the button on last as opposed to first? Yes, because when you're using the tying station, so if you're using something else, you don't have, you can do it however you want to, but when you're using the tying station, um, you've got, there's no way to attach a button, right? You got to do a loop because in order to attach it to the screw at the top of your tying station, you have to start with the loop right? I can't put a button on here and it attach. I could very carefully lay it on the acrylic plate, but it's just easier for me just to use the loop. But if you're going to do this, um, you know, with a safety pin or whatever, you can do it or a clipboard, you can do it the other direction if you want to. Okay. All right. So that's the bracelet that is available in the shop. There are two of them. I don't have a blue one out here, but so there you go. All right, now let's move on to the next kits that are available in the shop. These are so cool. So somebody asked me recently about the wrappers from Beetle On, and that's what these are. So if you guys have seen these or if you've gotten these in, um, you know, subscription boxes and you're not real sure what they are, I'm going to show you. So these are Beetle On wrappers, and they come in a couple of different shapes. I've got three different shapes available in the shop. And they make great charms, they make great pendants, but I've put them together to make earrings. So you get two of them, you get the wire, the ear wire, and the beads to go with it. So let me show you what it looks like once you add all the beads to it, and then we'll do one. So you just go back and forth with your wire and add your beads on however you want to, and then you just pop an ear wire on it and they are super pretty and they make the coolest charms. I love them as charms probably more than I love them as earrings, but I have them in three different shapes. So this one, I didn't really know what to call this one. It kind of looks like an eye, but it's not. <laughs> and I know that there's an official name for this one in the Beetle On catalog, but I was too lazy to look it up. So <laughs> this is one of the shapes that is available. Okay. I love this shape. This one makes really cool charms because it's wider than it is long. So there's that one that I have called the eye, even though it's not really. This one I'm calling the drop, and then I have the hexagon as well. 
They're super fun. They're really, really fun. If you've not ever had the opportunity to play with these, now is the, your time to do it because they're super fun and they work up really, really quickly. Okay. So in your kit, you get a, you get two pieces of artistic wire in um, the antique brass to match, and then you get twelve chat glass beads and your ear wire. So I, that's only six beads here, but the rest of them were on this earring that's already done. But I'm going to show you real quick how to put these together. So no two of these are gonna be exactly the same, which is also another reason why I love them. Yeah, Patty says like string art. They're very much like string art, super fun. So you just want to, at some point, at some point, you can do this any way you want to. I usually start right up here at the top. I'll take my wire and lay it in front of the loop and then I'll wrap around once just to kind of secure my wire to it, okay? Now, I'm going to leave my tail. I'll cut that off in a few minutes. But now we're going to just kind of come and make little patterns, however you want to. Um, you can add your beads. You can do it without beads. Let's add a bead to this. So I'm just going to straighten out my wire. Let's pick up two beads. Pick up two beads. And then just come to any of the little the little divots so there's divots on the side and then on this one there's divots al divots along the bottom this one or their notches whatever you want to call them right the little notches is where you can hook your wire and then you can come across and hook your wire however you want to like you can you can make them look what however you want they look really cool with or without beads so if you're interested in playing with these and just the wire, they look awesome. But then you can add a bead. You can come across across the wire that's already there if you want to. Find another little spot. Tuck your wire in. Go across. And you're just, I'm, I'm doing the back and the front. I'm only adding my beads to the front, but you can add your beads to the back too, and it gives it an extra kind of dimension to it. So... Add some more beads, drop those down. Cross somewhere, anywhere. All right. I've got one more bead to add. I'm going to pop him in, sort of in the middle. Whoops. And that's really all there is to these, you know? And they're, they all turn out so different. But they match because your beads all match, right? Your beads match, your wire matches. When you're done, you've added all the wire and stuff that you want to it, then you just come right back up here to the top again. You can secure it anywhere you want to. I'm just gonna wrap around again, right at the little, the loop at the top. I'm gonna come to the back and I'm gonna trim off my wires and then add my ear wire to it and it's done. So it's super, super quick but a lot of fun because you don't have to be a super wonderful wire wrapper to do this, right? You just pop your beads on there. This is a terrible cutter. Why do I have this one out? <laughs> I need to just throw it away. Even though I marked it, I still pick it up. I'm gonna trim off my little excess wire here. And then if you want, you can come in with your chain nose pliers and kind of push the ends down just to be sure that it's not gonna come undone right and I've secured all my beads to it super super cute fast easy and now I'm going to open up my ear wire thread that on and close it back there you go so I have all of these the beads are pretty much the same in all of the kits just because this colorway looks so good with the antique brass, but you could switch it out for whatever beads you wanted to, but all three kits pretty much have the same beads. So there's this shape, there's this shape, whoops, right? And then this shape. They're super, super fun. 
Joan says they're not selling them on the Beetle On website anymore. I wonder if they're discontinued. I didn't even bother to look. I have a bunch of them. So if these sell out and you're looking for more of them, send me a message because I do have extras. I just put, um, you know, several in the shop as kits. But if you're looking for more of the wrappers, let me know because I've got, I have a handful of them left that I didn't put as, put together as kits. Um, I don't think I have any of the silver anymore. I think I used all of those up, but I think I've got plenty of the antique brass ones. So if you need a few more, just let me know. Okay, so those are the earrings in the shop, right? Okay, so now last but certainly not least is the necklace. And I love this. I'm, I'm so, I'm so obsessed with this. Um... Oh, Joan says the grab bags aren't being sold. She wasn't talking about the wraps. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, guys. That's what I get for not reading every single comment as it goes by. Just ignore me. <laughs> Just listen to Joan. She's the brain, okay? <laughs> okay, so I have a necklace project that is so pretty. If you've seen it in the shop, the picture does not do it justice. But I'm going to lay it out for you so you can see, okay? So this was the inspiration for our necklace. This is the main, <laughs> this is the main focal, but you know I'm extra. So I had to do extra things with our focal. So I've added these pearls and that's going to hang from that guy. I'll raise you up a little bit here. Move everything out of the way. Hold on. <laughs> Joan says, we love confusing Sarah, right? <laughs> okay, now for the beaded part of this, we have enough to create for each side. So it's turquoise composite in these geometric shapes. So it's not real turquoise, guys. It's turquoise composite, but gosh, it's pretty. And then little garnets. I put little garnet beads on either side to kind of bring out that red pop that's in the turquoise composite. That goes on either side. So we're gonna, one side's already done. We gotta bead up the other side here. And then that is gonna be attached to rings and the faux suede lace. And of course, I have to add a, cr a crown to it to make it even more regal. Oh, it's so pretty. I know it doesn't look like much laying down right here, but when you see this completed and you see it on the bust, you're going to be like, oh, that's awesome. At least I hope you are. I hope you feel that way about it because <laughs> that's the way I feel about it. So you get your, your little wire to wire wrap our, our pearl piece here. And here's all the rest. So you get all the PC parts. Okay. And we're going to put this together. So let's do the, let's do the beaded link first. Okay. So I've got a really short eye pin. I guess that's, I don't know why I picked the short ones, but whatever. So we're going to thread on one of the little garnets. And they really are, you can't tell under this lighting for some reason. But they are like a raspberry garnet. They're so pretty. So a garnet, a daisy spacer, one of our composites another daisy spacer, and then another garnet bead. Okay. So that's one of our links. Now I'm going to use my pliers here. We're going to just do a simple loop. So I'm going to grab the wire where it is exiting the bead. Wanda wants to know where you got your crown ring. <laughs> Of course she does. That's a secret. <laughs> I got it on Etsy. <laughs> Everything good is on Etsy. Okay, so what is a composite stone bead? Can somebody can somebody tell Kindle what the definition of a composite bead is while I put the <laughs> while I put this together? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to grab the wire where is it exiting the bead and I'm going to go ahead and bend it. I'm not bending it over the pliers, okay, I'm, because I'm not doing a wrapped loop, so I don't need any of the extra room. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim off. I'm going to leave myself about a fourth of an inch of wire. And 
Then I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers. I'm gonna grab the tip of that wire and I'm going to roll it back to close up our loop. So we've got a loop on either end. Okay, so there's one. We're gonna do two more. So a garnet bead, a daisy spacer, a turquoise composite, a daisy spacer, and another garnet. And guys, if you are interested in these garnets, I actually have full strands of the garnets in my shop. I ended up with a ton of garnet beads, so if you're looking for a strand of garnets, I think they're $8. They're not super expensive, um, but the, they're really good quality. All right, so grabbing the wire again, bending. Trimming off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch. Coming in with the round nose pliers. I'm gonna roll back to close my loop. And we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna do, we'll do our little wire wrap on this guy, okay? So, garnet bead, daisy spacer, a composite. Daisy spacer and a garnet. I'm in love with the composite beads. They're so cool. They're so cool. Okay. Grabbing, bending. I'm going to come in with a cutter. And I'm going to roll back to close up my loop. Okay. Now, to go ahead and attach these guys, I'm just gonna use some little jump rings here. So we'll make our little chain. So two pairs of pliers, twist open the jump ring, thread one, thread another, hold and close back. Another jump ring, twist open, thread and thread and then close that back okay so we have our two oh I need to add another jump ring to this <laughs> we've got our two beaded strands and now we're going to put together our little center component so I'm going to sit these to the side for just a second okay now with this guy, you've got a little piece of wire, it's 22 gauge, and we're gonna just wrap this like a briolette, and I'm gonna wire wrap it directly to our little focal here. So I'm gonna find the hole in the bead. They're drilled up here towards the top, and everybody's will be shaped differently, of course, because these are, you know, natural, funky fun pearls okay so everybody's are going to look a little bit different some of them will be a little bigger some of them will be smaller some of them will be longer they're just really cool it's like getting a gift <laughs> you know what I mean all right so we're going to take the wire I haven't brought it directly to the middle it's kind of off center a little bit so one side is a little bit shorter than the other and I'm going to bring those two wires up and I'm going to cross them over the top of my bead. But I want them to still, I, I want there to still be a little bit of wiggle room there just so that this guy has some little natural, natural swing to it. Is that a shell bead? No, this is a pearl. It's a freshwater pearl. And now we're going to take the long end. I'm going to bend it upwards. I'm going to take the shorter end and bend it this direction. Okay, and we're gonna use the shorter wire to wrap around. And you can do a messy wrap, you can do a tight little wrap, you just do whatever you, you need to do. I'm gonna hold on with my pliers here. Whoa, and try not to crack your bead. I'm just gonna do a messy little wrap. Okay, I'm gonna come to the back, trim off the excess. Okay, now I want to wrap this directly to my component. So what I'm going to do, Biwa, Biwa, is that how you say it, Kathleen? Biwa stick pearls. 
I'm going to take the wire and I'm actually going to bend it to the front. Okay. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers to make a loop. So up and over, rotate the pliers, take the wire back out here to the front. Okay. Now I need to very carefully attach this. So I'm just going to snap the two together, right? Oh, there wasn't much snapping there. <laughs> I'm going to take my bent chain nose pliers to hold on. And then I'm just going to do a little more messy wire wrapping in here. And you can make this neat if you want to. You don't have to do messy. I'm just in a messy wire wrap kind of mood. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to come back here to the back. I'm going to trim off. Take your pliers, tuck down any ends you've got, and we've attached our pearl to our pendant. How pretty is that? Oh my gosh, so pretty. <laughs> I am so in love with this necklace, like I, I can't even. I, I, I don't even have enough of the pieces left over to keep one for myself. I wish, I wish. I may have to reorder some of this. Okay. <laughs> excuse me so now what we want to do is we want to attach everything and I'm going to use a, another jump ring here I'm going to attach that to our little loop on the top of our pendant and then let's see that's not how I did this is it I guess it is I could have sworn I did this differently but maybe not can't remember how many jump rings I had in the center. We're gonna, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here, obviously. All right, I'm just gonna attach here. I could have sworn there was an extra jump ring in this little situation, but I don't know. I've slept since then. I could pull up the picture, but all right. So I'm pretty sure there was an extra jump ring involved here. We'll figure it out in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, because that's that's driving me crazy. No, that's right. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, now what we need to do is we need to attach our length, which is just these beautiful pieces of the faux suede lace. So I've already attached the ends because this was the one that I used for the pictures. So you get your cord ends for either end, and of course you get your clasp to attach here. Okay, so that's how you're going to finish it off. Um, but you want to attach these with jump rings to our loops here. So this one is already done. This one has just a, you know, I've got a lark's head knot in it. So that's what we're going to do over here with the other. So you'll take your pieces of faux suede lace. You've got two pieces. You want to fold them in half. And then you want to take your loop put it through your decorative loop, and then you just want to pull your ends through that loop to make yourself a little lark's head knot. And if you want to, once you get that cinched down nice and tight, you can come to the back and add a little drop of hypo cement right in there. That'll keep your knot nice and secure, though I don't think you're going to need anything extra. Okay, now we are going to attach to our decorative rings and we will attach our little crown as well. So this is where I messed up. There are too many jump rings down here. <laughs> so I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna flip this over. And use our jump rings up here. So there's one. I know it's hard for you guys to see. Sorry about that. Okay. Our other jump ring over here. I can't wait for you to see this on the bust. Well, sitting it down flat just it does not give it justice. It just doesn't. So there's that. Okay. Now, just for extra, gosh, you can't even see. 
Oh, it's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. <laughs> I'm going to attach my crown to this for all of our queens, right? And I just want to attach it up here. Now, you can attach yours wherever you want to. Some people don't like it to be off balance by adding something like that in a spot like that. I'm a huge fan, so, I, you know, I'm going to leave it just like it is. This down here, now I still ended up with one extra jump ring. I know, I'm driving you guys crazy with this, but I now realize the error in my ways down here. It was two jump rings so that everything hangs flat. It just, I just didn't realize. So I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> now it makes total sense, right? Now the two ends can go onto this. If I can hold it all together, my gosh. Thank goodness it's a Friday. <laughs> now my two ends fit on this jump ring and it all will lay nice and flat up against you or up against the bust. That's what I was struggling with. I was like, I don't understand the jump ring thing here, but that's what I did. So now you can see when you lay it out, it makes a nice Y. So it took two jump rings there, right? All right, there's, oh, you can't even see it all. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn you around because I want you to see this one on the bus because it's so darn pretty. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, that means you have to look at me too. So, <laughs> all right. Hook this together. I'm so in love with this necklace, you guys. So pretty. It's so regal, but it's also understated in as like, it's not flashy in the sense that um, it's too much sparkle. You couldn't wear it with your jeans. You totally could. And I'm totally, I'm totally going to have to look how pretty. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so you've got a lot going on here, right? There's a lot going on, but it's so pretty. And the results are so royal and regal, if you will. You've got your beautiful freshwater pearl that's hanging from your pendant here. You've got your composite beads going up the sides and your little garnet accents, which are just an added little royal touch. And then your crown up here super cute you have leather what's well, not real leather it's faux suede lace no animals were harmed in the making of this cord <laughs> so you've got a little bit of everything it's got that kind of rugged edge it's almost like medieval feeling but not so much that you would feel like you know somebody would be like why are you wearing that with your t-shirt you know what i'm saying like it's not like it's not like costume jewelry um I think it turned out really pretty. I'm really proud of this one. Like there are a lot of things I put together and I'm like, oh, that's pretty. That's okay. You know, but this was one of the ones when I put it together and I laid it all out, I was like, wow, I did good. <laughs> so <laughs> this one is available in the shop. It is a little bit more pricey just because of the beads that are going on here. But I, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's totally worth it. And there's only a handful of them, so you're going to be like one of a few people who actually has one. One of these days, that's going to mean something, right? Like one of these days when you have an exclusive Sarah design, that's going to be something, I hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Who knows? Who knows? In my dreams, right? In my dreams. So that's the necklace that's in the shop. Don't forget about the bracelets that are also in the shop. What did I do with those? It would be nice if I could show them to you again. <laughs> So cup chain bracelets in red, plain crystal, and in the blue are available in the shop. And then last but not least to show you are the earrings. And I won't put all of them on, but just so you can see the little wrappers, they're not huge. You know, they're not, this is a dangle earring that I think just about everybody would be comfortable with wearing. Because a lot of times when I make earrings, I make really big earrings. This is one that is definitely something that I think everybody will be comfortable wearing. So there's that shape. There's this shape. And then there's this shape. Oh, Colleen. Colleen says it already means something. That kind of makes me want to cry a little bit. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Oh, I did. I look, 
you got me seriously. Like you got me kind of teary eyed on that. Whoa. Wearing my heart on my sleeve today, apparently. <laughs> got me right in the feels. Okay, so there you go, you guys. That's our Feel Good Friday show. Those are our three fun creations that you can easily recreate with things that you have in your own stash, or you can go over to my Etsy shop and pick them up in the shop, and I will send you all the goodies you need to recreate these in your own free time, and you can turn them into whatever you want to, right? You can take what I send you and take it to the next level, which you guys absolutely um, do every single time, which is just amazing to me, so... You guys are so talented. All right. So that is it for this Friday show. But for those of you who are part of Hardwired, you will catch me again tonight at 8 p.m. for Friday Night Live. That is happening. Our question and answer session over the project that we worked on this week, as well as our just our little nighttime chat before we part ways for the weekend. Um, anything else that I need to tell you guys? Not that I can think of, but um, if you need me, of course, feel free to reach out. Have an amazing weekend, you guys. If there's something in the shop that you see that you want, grab it now. Know that I ship everything that sells on Friday through Sunday on Mondays. I also tend to combine shipping if you get something within like the same 24 hour time period, if I can catch it before I'm packing orders. And even if I can't catch it, I do reimburse you for your shipping charges. So just know that like if you make a purchase now, but you make another purchase in six hours, I'll combine those and give you back um, some of your shipping for that. So that's it. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll see some of you guys later this evening. The rest of you guys, I will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye guys.